Right now, the lump of coal waiting in the stocking for millions of Americans out of work. Extended unemployment about to be cut off. That plus an update on the condition of health care reform as we sit down with the ranking Democrat on House Appropriations, Nita Lowy. Plus, Bill de Blasio's daughter and her battles with substance abuse. It's a subject the mayor-elect didn't want to talk about during the campaign, and it's not the only private life problems today for the incoming mayor we will dissect. An entertainment talk with the one and only Michael Musto. TV, movies, and Broadway 2, all right now on RFL. Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman. Richard French is off getting the reindeer ready for their long night on the job tonight. Thanks so much for joining us this Christmas Eve, Tuesday, December the 24th. We begin tonight with the presence and coal left in the political stockings for Congress and the president. There is a new crisis on the horizon for the unemployed, specifically those unemployed for extended periods of time. There are also the continuing questions about health care reform and its health as the new year approaches. I've talked about those subjects and more with Hudson Valley Congresswoman and the ranking Democrat on the House Appropriations Committee, Nita Lowy. She and I sat down earlier today. Congressman, for some time you've been sounding the alarm on unemployment. Extended unemployment benefits are set to end December 28th for people who have been on unemployment 26 weeks or longer than 26 weeks. There's not going to be a deal in time. And the numbers are, they really threw me. The average duration of unemployment, 36 and a half weeks now. More than a third of all people who are unemployed are out 27 weeks or longer. Your office has been saying it could impact 127,000 New Yorkers who won't get their benefits, including more than 5,000 in the lower Hudson Valley. And that could lead to job losses in New York and across the country. Is there any chance of getting a deal done? This seems like another manufactured crisis in the making. Good for you, Andrew. Uh, to me, it's an outrage that we left Washington without agreeing to extend unemployment benefits. You mentioned the numbers again. In my district, Westchester and Rockland, about 5,000 mm. people will lose unemployment benefits right after Christmas. Now, I was pleased that we were able to put together a bipartisan deal, more money for investments in the National Institutes of Health, Alzheimer's, autism, cancer research, more money for investments in transportation, roads, bridges, highway, more money for a whole range of educational issues that really help our kids, but not to pass the unemployment benefits, and we just better do it when we return in January. There is a thought out there that some of the people who have been unemployed for a long time are just, they're not looking hard enough or they're just being lazy and soaking up the government money, soaking up taxpayer money. How do you counter that argument? There will always be some people who complain that, oh, those people should be working. But I have interacted with PhDs who are trying to get a job for a year, two years. Mm. I spoke with someone who's in his 50s, trying to get a job, can't find a job. So we have a responsibility in the United States of America to give people a hand up, not necessarily a handout, but help tide them over and try and help them find the job that they really want. Most people want to work. Look, there are exceptions to every rule, but most people want to work. Do you think there are enough Republican votes in the House to get something through the House as soon as you get back? I would hope that after Speaker Boehner's comments about his extreme right wing, that most of the Republicans will understand how important this is, and certainly the majority of Democrats understand as well. I want to shift to health care, which still continues to dominate the headlines. The White House has been saying since day one it needs about 7 million people to sign up for health care by March. Right now they've got about a million people, and they really need healthy young people to sign up for this. What happens if they fall short of that number? Does, does the system fall apart? Is there funding for it? What happens? Look, I'm an optimist. I meet people with pre-existing conditions, whether it's cancer or most recently someone with a respiratory illness, who is so grateful that now that she has health care. I meet these people every day. They call my office. On the other hand, the rollout of the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare was a disaster, an embarrassment, no excuse for it. In fact, as with every major piece of legislation, there are problems with it, and we have a responsibility to work with the states, 
with the president and the president must articulate those problems and the remedies and they have to do it immediately. So there have been problems with it. But I am hoping, and especially in New York, which is just behind California with the most people mm -hmm. who have signed up, that we will make the Affordable Care Act work and amend it. There are problems with it. We have to amend it. So the technological issue is one thing. The issues of problems with the actual legislation are real, and we have to correct it. But you know policy and how policies work, and you know numbers, too. And I'm curious, because I, I haven't really been able to get a straight answer as to what does happen if we fall short of that seven million. What if we get close to only six million? What if we only get to three or four million? Is the system designed to continue functioning even if in short, do people's rates go up? Do you know what happens? Let me make it very clear. As a member of Congress, I am working very hard to ensure that all people can have health insurance because if they don't, they can go to the emergency room. You can be a healthy young man and break a leg and go to the emergency room and then you and I would have to pay for it. So I think the essence of the Affordable Care Act is good providing insurance for everybody, but there have been problems, and we have a responsibility to correct those problems. I'm hoping that the technical glitches, which are unexcusable mm -hmm. in days of <laughs> tech wizards, it's unexcusable that they couldn't get that right, and then that we amend those parts of the bill that could cause problems. It's especially for uh, single people uh, who are not part of a large organization right that are seeing real problems with this bill, and we've got to correct them. The, the Journal News, the newspaper in, in Westchester and Rockland, has been doing some stories about people impacted by the Affordable Care Act. They just did a piece about a woman named Dina Restiano, who, and they introduced us with video to her and her son. Uh, and she says that her health care rates have gone up about $200 since the implementation well, of What do you say to somebody who's in that position? I want to know the details. I want that person to come into my office, and we have to address it. Look, overall health care costs are going down mm -hmm. since the implementation of the Affordable Care Act. We know, because I meet with small businesses, large businesses, physicians, hospitals, on a regular basis for the last 10, 15 years, insurance rates were going up every year for many of these people, 5%, 10%, 20%. So this legislation didn't correct all the abuses that we've seen through the insurance industry. But I am concerned, and we have to correct the fact, that if seniors who are not on Medicare in their 50s and 60s are seeing their premiums going up and their deductibles going up, we have to look at the whole bill on a regular basis, and I am determined to correct it. You are the ranking Democrat on the House Appropriations Committee. You've made no secret of saying you want the gavel in your hand at some point. You'd like oh, to be the chairwoman of I that sure committee. I sure do. To do that, Democrats have to win back the House. Historically, in the second midterm election, the party with the White House tends to lose seats. President Obama's popularity is at about the level that George Bush's was in 2005. The GOP lost 31 seats in the 2006 midterm election. You've got the problems with the Obamacare rollout. You're still smiling, so clearly you're still <laughs> optimistic that Democrats can win back the House, but how, given all of those factors? Well, a week, a month is an eternity when it comes to the Congress of the United States. Frankly, I was very pleased that someone who has always worked in a bipartisan way across the aisle and who's very friendly with Paul Ryan, I was delighted that we were able to work together in a bipartisan way, put together a budget that will make important investments. There are challenges ahead, and I am cautiously optimistic that we can correct what's went wrong, continue to improve, and work together to make sure we serve the American people. What's really important there is I've been in Congress now, this is my 25th year, I have lots of energy, lots of determination, many people to serve, and I'm hoping and I'm going to continue to work to make sure that the government serves the people, not of just my district, of the whole United States. And if we do a good job, we can bring back the leadership to the Democrats, which would make me the first woman chair. Now I'm the first woman ranking member of the Appropriations Committee, but I'd always rather be the chair. 
Congresswoman Nita Lowy, who is for now the ranking member of the House Appropriations Committee. Congresswoman, thanks Thank for a few you. minutes. Thank you. Wonderful seeing you. Have a happy holiday. Happy holidays. Thank you. All right, let's get into this with tonight's Christmas Eve panel. Joining us, Dominic Carter, political journalist and author, and Mark Furnish, constitutional lawyer, has argued before the Supreme Court. He's also a professor at Brooklyn Law. And, Dominic, the, the unemployment benefits, that runs out this week, uh, Saturday. Amazing that such a big story has gotten so little attention, it seems, or is it just getting lost in the holiday season? That, that's a, good, a great question, Andrew, because I don't have the answer to it. All I know is I think that it's horrible for Americans, I know you're going to say, oh, ble possibly bleeding heart liberal, which I don't view myself that way. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is the safety net, as we've been saying, it's growing with many and many more Americans are being forced under that safety net. They don't want to be there. And our government, including Democrats that went along with this deal, they held their nose in order to get a budget agreement for two years. The Democrats agreed to this, and now people are going to be, what's going to happen? Well, if, what, if, if you're still out of work, like many Americans are, what's going to happen? Harry Reid says in the Senate side they're going to try and get something done. But if you're sitting home tonight and you're out of luck on Christmas Eve, what happens next you week? You know what's going to happen? The same thing that happens every time with them. They're going to go back and forth about it and wring their hands and ream each other out. And then at the last second, two seconds before it runs out, they'll figure out a way to extend it, just like they always do. I pray and hope that you're right, but it's already over. Then they'll I mean, sunset they, it and do it retroactively, like we call it in the law, nunc pro tunc. They'll make it go retroactively and pay them for what they missed. Oh, he's dropping the, the Latin the on us yeah. now. He's, yeah, dro he's dropping the Latin. Maybe they get something done early on in 2014, but that's only if the Republicans think that there's no advantage to it. All right, we're going to take a quick break here on RFL. Up next, New York City Mayor-elect Bill de Blasio's daughter talks substance abuse and recovery. But the real talk may be focused on de Blasio himself as this and another private life scandal move front page. Is this what the next four years are going to bring in New York? That's next. Stay with us.